Hey everyone, we've got a new player of the week section on eFootball. As always, I'll put timestamps in the description. So if there's a particular player you want to hear about, just click the description and there'll be a link to take you straight to them. So before we start looking at the players, I'm just going to say these are national team cards. These are from the international matches over the last week or so. So when we get the league challenges every week, Italian league, Spanish league, whatever it is, none of these cards will be usable. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking at this pack, you can't decide whether to spin. That's just something to keep in mind. But we'll have a look at who we've got. Firstly, we've got a four-star player. We've got Rolls, plays for Hearts in Scotland. So he's normally a build-up centre-back. They've given him left-back and made him a defensive full-back. And he's not brilliant. He's, he's very much a four-star card. Um, they've given him a, a nice boost on his pace and on his technicals, uh, which is what you expect if they turn a centre-back into a full-back. Um, Skill-wise, they've added interception, man-marking, and first time shot, uh, I, I didn't see what he did this week, but I guess he scored a good goal. Um, he's already got blocker, aerial superior, jack rack clearance. So he's got a nice selection of skills there, to be honest. Um, certainly defensively. I'm not sure about this guy. As a left back on the ball, he is horrible. Absolutely horrible. The passing you can get away with. Um, defensively, he's kind of okay, except for defensive engagement. For a fullback, he's probably quite decent on the whole, to be honest. The pace... He's not the slowest in the world, but he's he's not quite as quick as I would want a fullback to be. Jumping and physical, as you'd expect from someone who's normally a centre back, for a fullback could be very good. Uh and stamina, that's decent for a fullback. So yeah, as a fullback, you, you've either got a defensive fullback who's not the quickest and absolutely horrible on the ball, or you've got a centre back who's got pretty dodgy engagement, he's not particularly great and there's other defences either. Um but he's got a good selection of defensive skills, so like I say, very much a four-star card. I don't think many people are going to be particularly keen to get this guy. If, you, if you're Australian or, you, or if you support Hearts, I think you'd be very happy with it. But outside of that, yeah, it's not a brilliant card, to be honest. And we go to our first booster already. So, Yamchuk from Valencia. It's the first featured version we've had of him, I think. Uh, the first thing they've changed, they've changed him from a target man to a fox in the box. For me personally, that's a big upgrade. A target man was kind of stand around uh, waiting for long balls and crosses, um, whereas a fox in the box will make more runs forward. He'll be, make, he'll be making later runs into the box than the goal poacher would, but he will be more mobile than a target man. So for me, that's an upgrade. Um, Skill-wise, I'll start with the skills, get that out of the way. He's got his normal selection of skills, but they've given him pinpoint crossing. So you've got a big, tall striker who can only play through the middle, but he's got pinpoint crossing. Brilliant. I'm not sure that's going to be too useful, especially when he's got 65 for lofted pass, so that's frankly useless. But I guess he did a good cross during the international matches. Um, they're giving him a bit of a boost to his, to his technicals, to his passing. Uh, his jumping as well has had a bit of a boost. Um, they've taken a bit off his balance he's lost about four or five off his balance from his base guard um but as i mentioned this is a booster so if we activate the booster there we see it's, it's a nice i think that's a nice booster actually so now he's a little bit better on the ball you know he's a bit more usable with his ball control uh he's not gonna be great on the ball uh regardless certainly initially you know even with a good gameplay boost you probably won't get 80 although some managers are giving you plus three now um but yeah, ball control at 80 before the game plan boost. His attacking awareness and finishing will both hit 90 with the game plan boost. Heading at 80. He's jumping on physical for a tall guy who's got, as you saw, he's got area superiority with heading and acrobatic finishing. So he should be quite good from crosses. He's got first time shot, long way shooting. He's got a lot, really good selection skills for a big tall strike. Around super sub, by the way. We got a super sub. Um, but yeah, with some of those aerial skills, he's quite tall at 6 foot 3. It's a shame he's jumping on physical, only 77. As I mentioned, there are managers now that will give you plus three than Guardiola, certainly. Um, so depending on which manager you use, you could hit the 80 mark with these uh, in the game plan. But uh, yeah, reasonable pace with with A form, with the booster activated, kicking power is decent. I think he's quite a decent fox in the box to win. So I think he's going to be one of these ones where it's a classic case of, you know, making sure you don't ask too much of him. Because as much as it's nice to get his ball control up a bit higher, uh, certainly compared to his base card, he's not a dribbler. He's not going to be particularly comfortable on the ball with that low balance. Passing's not brilliant, albeit, again, with the game plan boost, he should be able to get 70 on low pass. But with the awareness and the finishing, reasonable pace, and a bit of error on physical ability as well. I think on the whole, this guy could be a reasonable one. It depends on what kind of striker you like. But if you like a, a big physical striker, if you, if you like the fox in the box player style, which I do, I think with the skill set he's got and, and where his attributes are decent, especially with the awareness and finishing, he could be a pretty effective striker. So not a brilliant one for everyone, but I think for some people, this, could, this guy could be pretty useful to pick up. 
And then we have Nelson Semedo. So again, I think the first feature version we've had of, of this guy. Um, nice boost to the technicals again and passing. Um, his acceleration is up a bit, although his lower body seems to have been nerfed a bit. His speed, kicking power and stamina, I think they're, they're down a little bit from his base card. Um, Skill-wise, always oh, another booster. Um, Skill-wise, they've added one-touch pass and track back. Interesting. He's got pinpoint crossing already. A bunch of stuff uh, going forward. Soul control and some skill moves. If you like the dribblers, I think the dribblers are quite like this guy's an attacking fullback. But if you look down here, acrobatic clearance, but nothing else defensively. There's no interception, blocker, man marking, none of that. Uh, I always say interception, like, in my opinion. And I think in a lot of people's opinion, it's probably the most important skill for fullback. So that's a bit of a miss. Um, but looking at the attributes, he's rapid. That, that's clearly his greatest strength. He's rapid. He does have decent dribbling at 84, and his ball control and tight position should hit 80 with a decent enough game plan boost. So for a fullback, he's going to feel pretty nice on the ball. Uh, the bounce will go 80 plus with the game plan boost. Passing in lo low and lofted could be better with the lofted. You know, it's a shame with pinpoint crossing that he's not hitting the 80 mark on, on lofted pass with a game plan boost. Although, again, you can get plus three with some managers now. So, yeah, on the ball, decent. Passing certainly could be worse. It's not too bad. But then defensively, sure, with the tackling, aggression, defensive engagement, they're kind of okay. But defensively, we're in a 73, and he doesn't have interception. So there's the problem with this guy. With the pace, how decent he is on the ball, uh, some decent skills as well. I think as an attacking fullback, going forward, yeah, good. But when you come to the defensives, the awareness being a bit low and not having interception, there's going to be a real weakness there. So I'm not sure I'll be able to trust this guy defensively. Um, he can play right midfield. I don't think he's got quite enough going forward to be a proper winger. But if you play with wing backs, and I mean proper wing backs, I don't just mean shoehorning players like Mbappe into wide midfield just because they've got it on their position chart. I mean, if you play with actual wing backs, you want a guy who's got pace and, and a bit of an engine, albeit 85 is not the best stamina, but certainly with the pace, decent on the ball. He's got a bit of defensive ability, even if he's a bit lacking. I think as a wing back, that could be the best way to use him. Uh, if that's the kind of formation he's, he could be a really nice one to have because he's got the pace, he's got a bit going forward, he's got a bit going back, even if he's lacking a bit. So. Yeah, certainly could do a good, good job as a wing back. And if you don't mind the fact he's a little bit, bit lacking defensively, as an attacking fullback, could do a job there as well. So, a bit of a glowing weakness defensively, but otherwise, he's got some strengths. It's not a bad card on the whole. And then we have Zielinski. So, we've got a bit pretty nice boost across the board here to Burns with Zielinski. Um, compared to his base card, everything's gone up a bit. Uh, the big boost they've given him is with his, his aerial ability. So, his jumping, his physical contact, and his heading. Um, I think his heading is had a really big boost and, and jumping as well. Um, and they have also given him heading and aerial superiority. So uh, it must have been from the game before the game against Wales. I watched him against Wales, didn't do much, but he must have scored a header in the previous game or something. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's got his usual skills and he's got a good selection of skills, I have to say. Long range curler, long range shooting, first time shot, one touch pass, through passing. Outside curler is a nice one as well. So he's got the shooting and the passing. And he's got the attributes to back up. Um, on the ball, is very tidy. Passing, not brilliant, but decent. Finishing 78. Again, you get a decent enough game plan boost. You're going to hit 80 for finishing and for attacking awareness. But with that finishing hitting 80, and with first time shot, long range shooting, long range curler, the guy's got a shot on him. He can score goals. He's got the whole player playing style. It's his usual playing style. They've not changed anything with his play style as positions. That play style will be active in all four of those positions. I don't think he's strong enough defensively to play centre mid. You could get away with it, maybe, as long as you've got at least one other midfielder behind him doing the defensive work, because with the game plan boost, you're going to be 70 plus and all these, but there's no defensive skills. So, yeah, I don't see him as a centre mid, but certainly attacking midfield, left mid, right mid, whole player playing style, active in all those positions, dying forward, getting into spaces, taking up good attacking positions. He's got decent pace. The arrows have had a big boost. That's a little bonus. Balance is all right. Stamina could be better. He will get tired as a whole player with only 84 stamina. But like I say, tidy on the ball, good at good attacking moments and finishing with your game plan boost. Passing is decent. He's got end product with his skills. I think this is a nice card, to be honest. He's, he's a really good all-rounder as, as an attacking midfielder or wide, right or left midfielder. Whole player playing style I like. He's got a bit of everything. I think it's a good, solid card on the whole. Then we have M Munoz from Palace. He joined Palace in January. So... Interesting one, this. We've had a, a left-back version in player of the week before, as a while back now. Um, we've now got a right-back version. And they changed his play style from full-back finisher to attacking full-back. Uh, he's had a slight boost on his technicals. Um, they've really nerfed his kicking power for some reason. Um, Skill-wise, they have added acrobatic finishing, 
great we've got a right back with acrobatic finishing um man marking as well though that's a good one so yeah he's got a pretty good selection of skills actually for a fullback so a heading uh and then we've got through passing and pinpoint crossing going forward and then defensively man marking interception blocker sliding tackle fighting spirit it's a really good selection of skills actually for a fullback but if we come back to the attributes good pace good stamina defensively is all right it'd be nice if the awareness and engagement were a bit higher but He's a 92 rated card. He can't expect too much. So I think on the whole, he's decent defensively. Down the left, I would like him to be a bit higher. Um, on the ball especially, he's a little bit iffy. And, and then with his passing and crossing, could be better. But he does have through passing and pinpoint crossing. So as long as you don't ask too much of him, he should be all right with his passing and crossing. I think on the whole with this, with this card, with Munoz, um, what you've got for me, you've got an attacking right back as long as you're careful not to, not to ask too much of him going forward, because like I say, technically he's not brilliant. But if you don't ask too much of him, he could be a pretty effective attacking right back. But I think if you look at the skill set, with that really good selection of defensive skills for a fullback, if you if you like playing defensive fullbacks, if you put the defensive instruction on this guy as a defensive fullback, he could be pretty decent, actually. I think he could be pretty effective. So I think both ways you could use him as a right back. He could be a decent card. Uh, on the on his position, chart, he, he's got centre back, but he's not good enough at defending with his defensive attributes and defensive midfield. Likewise, he's not good enough technically, in my opinion. He could get away with him both ways, but I don't think he I don't think he'll quite cut it in either of those positions personally. But as a right back, like I say, not a brilliant card, not a top level card, but I think he could do a job as an attacking right back. And if you put a defensive instruction on him, I think he could do a pretty decent job as a defensive right back as well. So yeah, might not be a bad card to pick up. So we got Lo Celso. When I saw Lo Celso was in his pack, I was actually quite excited because I've had a couple of versions of him in the past. I, I especially had a feature version on uh, back in the Pez days in my club, and I really liked it. But um, to be honest, I, they've just not really done much with him. They've given him left midfield, um, but they've actually nerfed him a little bit on the ball with these three technicals here. They have boosted him a bit with his, his finishing. He put a bit on his finishing. Uh, given him a bit more pace as well. Um, and a bit more physical contact, I think. But uh, yeah, ultimately, no change with his player style or his positions. Um, and I don't think they've changed anything with his skills, to be honest. He does have some decent skills. One touch pass and through passing. Uh, outside curl and a hill trick, they're nice ones to have. First time shot, long wind shooting. A few skill moves for the skill merchants. But uh, yeah, ultimately, if you're going to put Los Celso in Team of the Week, he's obviously had a good game. He's obviously played well. I think they could have done a bit more with him because... He's not that brilliant on the whole, you know. Dribbling's quite good at 88. You'll get that up to 90 with a good game plan boost. Outside of that, the best attribute after that, 85 for lofted pass, but he's not got pinpoint crossing uh, as a left midfielder. So, yeah, I don't know. He's a neat player, you know. That, again, like Zielinski, whole player will be an active playing style with all these four positions. He's a nice player style for an attacking midfielder. He definitely isn't good enough defensively to play centre mid, but as a whole player at attacking mid, right mid, left mid. He's decent, you know, decent pace, decent on the ball, decent passing, but there's nothing really amazing about him. So, yeah, I feel like they could have boosted him a bit, bit better. Maybe he could have had one or two extra skills, like pinpoint crossing or something, to make it really worthwhile. But as it is, it's just a lot of Celso who can play left midfield. So, yeah, it is a decent card. Just a bit disappointing they didn't do more with him. And then we have Malin. So, Malin from Dortmund. Malin's had a bit of a boost uh, on a, in a bunch of areas. They boosted his passing a bit. Uh, his finishing, dribbling's up a little bit. Physical contact's up a little bit. But uh, they've nerfed his tight possession from his base card. Uh, his speed's down a little bit. Uh, his balance, I think, is slightly down as well. So, yeah, on the whole, <laughs> kind of similar to Los Elsa. I feel like they could have done a bit more with him, but it's a decent card. Um, one thing to bear in mind with Malin, he plays for Dortmund, so... As long as he plays for Dortmund and they're not licensed, then anyway, he will not get live updates. So he won't get any A or B form except when he's in Player of the Week, which is because they've been doing that now with Player of the Week packs from uh, like Champions League and, and national team selections. Um, in the past, those selections have been a bit delayed from the matches and, and they they just left. They would have players on their, on sort of, you know, C form or even D form sometimes. And I think some people are frustrated by that. So it seems like now, Anyone who's in player of the week will automatically get A form. But outside of that, like I say, he won't be getting A or B form because he's not getting live updates. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, don't think they've done anything with his skills. Uh, he's got a bunch of skill moves for those who like dribbling. He will be pretty nice on the ball. 
Um, but where it's important, where it's important, long range curler, long range shooting, first time shot. Uh, he also has acrobatic finishing. Outside curl is a nice one. He's a super sub as well. Always nice. Um, but like I say, the shooting ones, I think that's where it matters. First time shot, long range shooting, and long range curler. He's down as a wide right player. I think he's best as a wide left. You know, as a right footer on the right, he's not got pinpoint crossing. Uh, he's not particularly two footed. Um, I mean, in he's got a strong, weak, strong left foot, but he rarely uses it. I think he's best on the left, cutting in onto his right foot. Long range curler, long range shooting, first time shot, 84 finishing. I think this guy could be pretty, pretty potent, especially as a super sub as well with the pace he's got. Decent on the ball, really good finishing on his right foot. Don't think he's got the attacking awareness to play as a striker with only 77 attacking awareness, but I think when you look at where his strengths are, the pace, decent on the ball, really good shooting on his right foot. Wide left, especially as a super sub, could be very effective. So yeah. It's not an amazing card, but I think with the strengths he's got, if you use him in that way, particularly playing to his strengths, it can be could be pretty good. So yeah, it's it's a fairly good card on the whole. And then we have Brennan Johnson from Spurs. So play style has changed. Normally a dummy runner, which is not everyone's cup of tea. They've changed it to deep line forward, which is not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, it depends what you like, really. Um, my overall issue with this card is his playing style, his attributes, and his positions. I just don't think they all really marry up to make him particularly great in any area. Uh, I think as a player playing wide right, uh, I mean, they've had, they they boosted his attributes pretty much across the board pretty nicely. Um, they've not made much of a difference to his pace, but pretty much everywhere else he's had a nice boost. So it is a decent version of Johnson in terms of the attributes. Um, we'll have a quick look at his skills. They've given him, they've added through passing, uh, and they've added track back. And again, not everyone's going to be happy about that, but for some people, that's a nice skill to have. Um, already got first time shot, but one touch pass and through passing now. Um, I don't think the one touch pass and through passing are going to make his passing that great, though. They're just going to kind of improve it from what, from what it is, which isn't brilliant. It depends what position you play him in. But um, yeah, don't ask too much from his passing, even with those skills. His passing should be okay now, but not brilliant still. But in terms of these positions that he's got, like I say, I'm not sure where he really works uh, with the passing he's definitely not good enough for attacking midfield in my opinion i think with the attacking when it's 83 he's a bit lacking as a center forward uh, i don't think the awareness is high enough for that it's not disastrously low though so you could get away with that um but again it's the playing style deep lying forward and he's all about pace and you know deep lying forward is going to loiter he's going to get involved in the build up he's going to be very late making his runs into the box i think with the attributes this guy's got he'd probably want it to be more of a poacher but as an SS, I think SS might be where he's best. Um, making late runs into the box. If you don't ask too much from with his passing, having one touch pass and through passing, he could be okay in the build-up. He could get away with it. He's got good finishing, first-time shot. Decent on the ball. Not brilliant, but decent. And with that pace, like I say, when he make, when he does eventually make his runs into the box, bearing in mind that deep line four playing style, he will not be making as many runs forward as a poacher or even a fox. But when he does, making late runs into the, into the box with the pace he's got could be effective. Uh, wide right, he can't cross it. He's right-footed. He's not two-footed. I don't think right mid or, or as a wide right forward he's going to be effective. But like I say, as an SS, I think that's probably where you're going to get the most out of him, making late runs into the box with his pace. As an SS, the awareness is decent. The finishing is good. He's got first-time shot. Yeah, that's probably where he's best at. I'm, like I say, though, my big issue with this card, when you look at the play style, the attributes, the skills, the positions, I don't think it all really comes together to make him brilliant in any particular role in any particular position i'm just not sure personally where he's best but i think ss with a deep line forward playing style maybe even at playing wide left as an ss because you could put him wide left into that kind of wide left forward position but make him an ss maybe from there be useful cutting in onto his right foot good finishing first time shot yeah that might be it but either way whether it's on the left or through the center i think the best way for that to use this guy is probably as an ss and if you do that he could be pretty effective but uh yeah, he's not going to be for everyone. And there we have our goalkeeper, Bento. So, solid keeper, to be honest. He's had a nice boost from his base card. Um, not really changed anything. It's just a good version of him. Uh, the awareness at 88, he should, with a good enough game plan boost, he should get up to 90+. plus. Uh, catching's all right. Powering, not brilliant. Uh, could be worse, though. Again, that should hit 80, though, with the game plan boost. Reflex is 86. Would be nice if they're a bit higher so you could get up to 90 with the game plan boost, but you can't have it all. Um, they're certainly not not bad, but yeah, could be better the reflexes and then the reach is great. 92, 6'3 roughly. Uh, 92 reach, got very good coverage of his goal. 
yeah, uh, not much more to add, really. It's a very nice version of him compared to his base card. Um, I think if you've got a really, any really top goalkeeper options, you've got some of the legend keepers, you probably wouldn't really get any use out of this guy. Um, but if you don't have that many goalkeeper options, he could be a good one to have. But uh, again, you can't use him in the, the league challenges. So the Brazilian league challenge pops up. He won't be eligible. But outside of that, yeah, if you need more goalkeeper options, could be a useful one to have. And he will get live update in the Brazilian league. So, yeah. Not going to be for everyone, depending on how many, how many top keepers you got, but could be useful for some people. And then we have Baumgartner. Baumgartner scored a super quick goal um, against Slovakia. Got the ball kick off and just ran past everyone and pinged it in the corner. Lovely goal. Um, he's not the only player who did that. We'll come to that. But uh, yeah, this is a nice card. Um, normally a creative playmaker. They made him a whole player. Uh, that will be active at attacking the field, his registered position. He can play as a wide left forward as well. Um, I think he could be effective in both those roles, to be honest. Um, giving him a bit of a boost to his finishing and his physicals. So the heading, jumping, physical had a bit of a boost. Uh, not the most useful attributes to boost, but um, yeah. Apart from that, not a major change from uh, the other attributes that he's got on his, on his base card, to be honest. But it is still a nice card. Um, if we look at his skills... They've given him long range shooting. Uh, they, they swapped that in for Sombrero. I think that's a, a good swap. Long range shooting, obviously, because he scored his goal from outside the box. Uh, so that's a nice one to have. He's already got long range curler. Uh, he's got soul control, which is nice. Uh, heel tricks a nice one to have. One touch pass and through passing, crucial for an attacking midfielder. Pinpoint crossing. I mean, his lofted pass isn't great. He can't play on the right. He's right footed. So I don't think he's going to be cross putting any great crosses in particularly often if at all but uh the low pass is decent not amazing but decent 82 for finishing with long range shooting long range curler is good on the ball he's pretty tidy he's very tidy on the ball uh attacking man could be better but it's okay pace is decent it's certainly got decent acceleration decent jump on him i'm not sure that's going to come in particularly handy uh, bounces all right stamina for a whole player is not great he will get tired but uh yeah it's a decent card on the whole one thing to keep in mind with this card though He's not playing for a, a team that's licensed. Uh, he's not going to be getting live updates. So, again, A rating because he's in player of the week. But outside of that, you're not going to get any ALB form on this guy. And he's only got standard form. So there is something to keep in mind in addition to the fact that he's not going to be eligible for any league challenges. So those things do go against him. But that being said, some decent skills, some very decent attributes. For me, could be useful on the left, cutting inside, hitting some very nice long range curlers and his finishing in general on his right foot. But as an attack midfielder with a whole player playing style, I think that's probably where he's best. He's got a bit of everything. He's going to be tidy on the ball, got a bit of end product with his passing and his shooting. It's a pretty tidy card on the whole. It's not a, a top level one by any means, but it's a tidy one. I think he's decent. Speaking of decent cards, this is a decent card. We have Burtz. I think this is clearly the card everyone's going to want to pick up. And as I mentioned with Baumgartner, this guy did the, the exact same thing. Scored a goal within the first 10 seconds of the match against France. It was an absolute banger as well. So, first change to note they've made with this guy, they've given him left midfield. So if you like using inverted wingers, which I do, especially with the whole player playing style, that's a very nice addition to this card. Um, if you get his base card, you can now use position trainers to give him new positions. So you could actually make his base card a left midfield. So keep that in mind. Um, in terms of his attributes, a bit of a boost to his lofted pass uh, and to his speed as well. Um, on the ball, he's been nerfed slightly and not quite as good on the ball. Um, looking at his skills, they have given him long range shooting uh, and dipping shot. And they've taken away cut behind and turn and sombrero. So again, I think those are good, those are, those are good additions. Um, Again, with this guy, I'll quickly mention it. Live update. He's got A4 and quizzes in player of the week, but he's playing for uh, Dortmund. Is he playing for Dortmund? I've just completely forgotten who he plays for. Leverkusen. There we go. Had a brain fart. He's playing for Leverkusen. They're not licensed, so he's not going to be getting ALB form uh, unless he joins a team that, that is like, uh, getting, a, getting a live update. So if he joins a Premier League team or... You know, Real Madrid or Barcelona. It looks like he might be moving this summer, so he might end up getting live update. But as of now, he won't be getting it once this week is over. That's just from Player of the Week, uh, and he's not eligible for the league challenges. So there are things that go against him. Like I say, you can turn his base card into a left midfield. It's not a huge, huge, huge upgrade on the whole from his base card, if I'm honest. Um, it's nice having the lofted pass go up a little bit. Um, 
speed as well. But uh, apart from that, you know, on the ball, like I say, he's a bit worse on the ball in his base card. But it is a booster. Uh, and this is the funny thing with this, this first card. So we've got a booster. Then great, he's a booster. Let's see what the booster does. Oh, nice. You get a boost to his ball control, his finishing, and his kicking power, and his physical contact when he's on A-form. Which, after this week, is not going to happen because he doesn't get live update. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, if he moves this summer to a team that will get live update, that booster might come in handy. But until then, it's useless. So, yeah, this week it'll be it'll be nice to have that boost. But after this week, until he joins a team that gets live update, that's just a complete waste of time. So, yeah, a bit of a funny one there. But, um, yeah, on the whole, it is, a, it is a great card. Like I say, it's not a huge upgrade on his base card. Uh, you can add positions to his base card. Not eligible for lead challenges won't be getting live updates so if you're looking at this card thinking oh it's a great card which it is and if you're really keen to get it which i am uh don't be too devastated if you don't get it because you can just pick up his base card and you can get just as much out of it really there's not gonna be a great difference albeit like i say if he does join a team and gets live update that booster will be usable if and when he gets a form so yeah plenty of positives about this card um whole player left midfield or attacking midfield both, so both those positions link with the end product he's got with his skills, with his attributes, really nice on the ball, good awareness, good finishing, good pace, good balance. I think anyone who's used this guy will know he's a really nice player and this will be a really nice card to pick up. Very effective in both those positions. As a wide right forward as well. Does have pinpoint crossing and I boosted, boosted his lofted pass. So if you like playing as, wide, as a forward wide right, could be really effective because it could be a really nice version of him to pick up. He won't have a play style active there, but I think it'll be very effective. Good attacking runs, so still make good attacking runs. Take up good positions and he's a bit better at crossing than he normally is. Still has the finishing. Yeah, really good card. It's going to feel really nice on the ball. Can be very effective. Loads of end product. But like I say, I wouldn't be too wide if you don't get it. Because I think his base card isn't too far off, to be honest. And uh, having a booster that's active on A form when he doesn't get live update. That's just funny, really, isn't it? But uh, yeah, there you go. It's uh, an interesting selection. Uh, obviously, Verse is a great card. I think you've got some really tidy ones in there. I think Baumgartner... Jelinski, two nice whole, whole player attacking midfielders. Uh, Yantrick could be decent for some people. Yeah, there are a few in there that aren't particularly exciting, to be honest, but there's a few decent ones as well. So, decent selection on the whole. So, hopefully you found that useful. Thank you, as always, for watching. Do appreciate it. I'll see you soon.